Yo, yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Fro in the building. And today, I'm going to be talking about the 2002 comedy Undercover Brother, starring Eddie Griffin, Chris Catan, Denise Richards, Dave Chappelle, Chi McBride, directed by Malcolm D. Lee. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. This is one of my favorite comedies ever, and it's not just because Eddie Griffin in his film has a fro. I get nonstop laughs from a really silly, goofy comedy like this one. Eddie has a really zany, body comedy type of performance in this movie, and I think he delivers. I wouldn't have given this role to anybody else but Eddie. There's an organization called The Brotherhood, led by Chi McBride, and their overall job is trying to stop the man from a plan called Operation Whitewash. If you're not really into racial comedy, like a Blazing Saddles, if you will, high chances you might not like this fucking movie. But I think everything is done really hilarious. For example, the mayonnaise sandwich scene. That's one of my favorite scenes in any comedy ever. You have hot sauce and a fucking watch. You have to learn to like mayonnaise. All jokes aside, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. A fucking watch with hot sauce. You just press the button, ting, and you... <laughs> It's awesome. I love that image. Phone died. Take two. I don't know how to say her name. I think it's Anjanae Ellis, but she plays sister girl. And I think she was an awesome addition to the film as well. Serious face nearly through the whole film, but a badass chick. I thought undercover brother and sister girl complimented each other rather well. Denise Richards plays white she devil. <laughs> I'm a little bit younger, I'm 25 years old, but I had a big crush on Denise Richards in this movie when I was younger. Acting wise, is she the strongest part of the movie? I wouldn't say so. But at the same time, I think she does a fine job with what the script is giving her. She has some fighting sequences here and there, and I think they're pretty all right. Her job is to seduce undercover brother and infiltrate the brotherhood. She's pretty much sent by the man. But around the third act, she flip-flops and she gives in to the charm of Undercover Brother and she switches sides. She's on the Brotherhood side now. Chris Catan is extremely over the top in this film, but I love his performance. I'm forgetting the character's name, but he plays the man's assistant or the right-hand man going after Undercover Brother. So Chris Catan's playing this evil, villainous guy, but like I said, in a very cartoonish way. I'm actually a fan of some of his roles that he's taken. I was a fan of him in House on Haunted Hill. I actually thought he stole the show in that movie. Night at the Roxbury is a guilty pleasure. It was funnier when I was younger. Now I think it's okay, but I still have a soft spot for that movie. And here, I gotta say, this is probably his most over-the-top I've ever seen him. The movements, the facial expressions, probably 9 out of 10 cartoonish. That was his name. Chris Catan's character is Mr. Feather. My favorite comedic performance probably has to be Dave Chappelle as Conspiracy Brother. Dave is a complete mess in the best way in this movie. He plays the guy always blaming the white folks like the white man did this, the white man did that. I can see some viewers thinking his character is a bit overbearing, but I had a blast. I thought he was hilarious, funny comedic delivery, great timing. Conspiracy Brother might have the best one-liners in the movie. Almost every time he shows up on screen, it's a great time, but this little part might be my favorite scene. Hey, why don't you walk down that tunnel, black man? Hey, black man, turn on the generator. This dinosaur is out there. Hey, black man, look out. He's got a gun. Oh, I'm here. But my vest caught it, bitch. Yes, I'm alive. Gary Anthony Williams is great as Smart Brother. He plays the nerdy tech guy of the Brotherhood. He's the one that comes up with the hot sauce watch for the mayonnaise. You have to learn to like mayonnaise. He ends up getting with White She-Devil at the end of the movie. I always thought that was funny. I think the strangest casting choice is Billy D. Williams as the general. He plays a highly decorated character that's used by the man to push this fried chicken to black folks that has this sort of mind control drug that turns them white. And it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it's a pretty big chuckle for me. 
Undercover brother? Undercover brother? What happened to you? He had sex with a white girl, that's what. Oh, was it everything oh, I dreamed it was of? Good. She was had it? pink nipples, didn't big she? Ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, big ones. Yeah, big ones. Yeah. Coffee match the drapes? Yeah. Excuse me. No, no, man, you can't be doing that. Something like no, that, man. man. You I almost forgot Neil Patrick Harris is in here and he almost steals the show whenever he's on screen. He's the only white person working in the Brotherhood and that gives me a big laugh for some reason. And Neil kills it. Neil really owns his role. He's a really fun time to watch in this movie. This is an action comedy and I will say that I do like the fight scenes. It's pretty goofy and some of the wire work definitely feels like a parody at times. But otherwise, there's some pretty cool moments. I remember being a little bit freaked out by Neil Patrick Harris ripping out the guy's spines near the end of the film. That shit was crazy. If you know what scene I'm talking about, that was insane. I don't know how I almost forgot the James Brown cameo, which is very, very bizarre. Pretty much Eddie Griffin uses a James Brown disguise. That's very realistic. It is James Brown in a cameo. Chris Catan, Mr. Feather, kidnaps James Brown at this award show from the limousine. They take him to the man's headquarters, and Eddie reveals himself under the James Brown disguise. The final fight between Eddie Griffin and Chris Catan is extremely silly, but I like it. I think it's a cool final showdown. During the finale, the Brotherhood meets up. Conspiracy Brother pushes the self-destruct button on accident. They're all running out. They're trying to beat the time. The man fails, but he's in his helicopter, and he flies away. We think Undercover Brother's not going to make it in time. He's going to get blown up by the building but he makes it out in time with his parachute pants. But overall, I really love this film. It's one of my favorite comedies ever. Very goofy, zany, slapstick, pretty violent at times for a PG-13, and I have a great time with every watch. Now, this one's a personal rating like every review, but I'm gonna have to give Undercover Brother a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching. It's been your boy, Fro Fizzle. Until next time, subscribe for more. Thank you. And how did you know I was hungry? I ain't eat nothing this morning. Are you trying to kill me? If you're going to pass in white America, you are going to have to learn to like mayonnaise. No.